There are shows with psychics. And there are shows with doctors. But there's no show like the psychic and the doc. Your practical paranormal power unleashed. This show synthesizes the talents of world-class medium Mark Anthony, the psychic lawyer, psychic explorer, and street smart spiritualist, behavioral psychologist, Dr. Pat Basili. All subjects are on the table and no topic is taboo. Inspiration, insight, action, and fun as Mark Anthony connects callers with loved ones in spirit in tandem with Dr. Pat's fresh, no-nonsense, street-smart, intuitive insights. And she is hilarious. Extraordinary problems require extraordinary solutions, which may come from this side or the other side. This is The Psychic and The Doc. And And it it starts starts now. That's what I'm saying. Hey, everybody, welcome to The Psychic and The Doc. And every show, uh, I'm Dr. Pat, and I'm joined by my esteemed colleague, you know, the most incredible psychic lawyer, psychic explorer, Mark Anthony. Uh, Mark, every show, we create a side doc frequency theme. And we yes. take a minute for, for the theme and set the stage for the show. And so so I had a caller from, uh, reach out to me and said, I, I want to show you guys do a segment. Tell me about that. I said, yes, it's it's part of the side doc thing. And yeah. we set this up in the spirit of Mark Anthony's frequency <laughs> uh, book uh, as the side doc frequency theme for show. So we have a moment like now. So all you all that call in, there is a theme. And today's theme is Mark. Tell him. Look, I got my hair to look like, like it. Go ahead, tell him. Uh, I am Leo. Hear me <laughs> roar. And and uh, yeah, because we are at the apex of uh, the Leo time frame. Yeah. And uh, next week we're segueing into Virgo. So there's a lot of Leo energy. And Leo is a fascinating sign. It's a fire sign. A lot of creative, dynamic people or Leos. Um, yesterday, August 16th was, and I can't believe it's 46 years since Elvis Presley died. I can't believe it. it. I know he's been dead longer than he was alive. I mean, Mm -hmm. amazing. Um, but, uh, this is a very, um, very intense, uh, intense time of the year. And so Leo, uh, this is find that inner lion. You don't have to be a Leo to do it. We all have that inner lion, inner power. And that doesn't mean you have to go around screaming and yelling and, and all that, but you got to find that power. And you know what, Dr. Pat, I saw an incredible movie um, over the weekend. It was, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's oh. where Tom Hanks plays yeah. Mr. Rogers. And there was yeah. one scene that really, really got to me. Um, it was it was like uh, they were taking a break on the show and there was these parents with a little boy. He couldn't have been not quite five and he was on an oxygen tank and he's standing there mm-hmm. and he's waving this plastic sword and he's hitting his parents and, and he's real disruptive. And Dr. Dr. Uh, Mr. Rogers says, well, you must be very strong because that's a heavy sword. And the kid goes, it's not heavy. And then Mr. Rogers said, but I bet you're really strong on the inside. And the kid drops the sword and goes and hugs Mr. Mm -hmm. Rogers. And a reporter who's watching this said to the producer, how often does this happen? And she said, every day. And watching that, Mm -hmm. a very sick child who was angry, he was so angry because he has to be on oxygen and he was obviously very sick. And Mr. Rogers had this uncanny ability to connect. And he saw in that little boy that inner strength. So when Dr. Pat and I are talking about, you know, find your Leo, hear me roar. I mean, yeah, I mean, some people are kind of, boy, you know, Dr. Pat and I have probably never been accused of being introverts. Okay, that's kind of (laughs) not an art thing. But you don't have to be an introvert to, to be strong. I mean, an extrovert to be strong. And you don't have to be an extrovert to make yourself known. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so glad you brought that up. There is so much confusion on introvert and extrovert. And I think we should do a show on that as we move into December, especially Um, because there is confusion on that. But the thing I love about what you said, and you really nailed it, 
because that energy is strong and dynamic. They are strong and dynamic personalities. You know, they have so many likable, likable traits. There's so much about them. Uh, they're positive. And, and I was told that being a quadruple Sagittarius and a quadruple Capricorn, that I'm supposed to have Leos at my, as my best signs, but my Capricorn kind of gets in the middle of that and says, oh, no, 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 you're not going to have that much fun. And <laughs> what Capricorn will do, they'll take the fun out of being a Sagittarius. But, you know, part of what we're talking about today is, is really this enormous spiritual power yeah. that Leos have. And, you know, whether you're a fan of Elton John and Lion King, you get the nature of that, don't you? You, oh, you get that nature. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, I'm glad you brought up Lion King. There's a perfect example. Um, and I think probably, I think it's almost a safe bet to say that most of the people listening have seen one of the versions of Lion King. And what did Simba have to learn? Okay, he had to learn to find that inner lion after being absolutely crushed, after dealing with the guilt that he was somehow responsible for the death of his father. And he goes through this whole... Um, maturation process where he finds and becomes that leo that that strong energy and i think that that also is a very important uh story very um a very very good lesson for mm -hmm. children especially those who've had parents who have passed yeah now let's do a little fun thing before we go to break and go to the phones and this is a live call-in show by the way you know, every show that we talk about a segment like this, it's always a live call-in show, 1-800-930-2819. Now, part of the Leo, the downside of a Leo, as they want to call it, the weaknesses is they have one gigantic weakness as it's framed. Uh, and, you know, the good news, they only have one. When you look up at the weaknesses of my signs, you're like, oh, my goodness. But they they have a selfish nature. I think that selfish nature is misunderstood because Leos are very good at boundaries. They're extremely good at healthy boundaries in a lot of cases. And sometimes they will put themselves first. They think about their own needs, you know, and they they move forward in situations. Now, this sometimes can drive good people out. Now, I'm going to give you a celebrity to name. You tell me if you think they're Leo. Ready, Mark? Okay. Jennifer Lopez. Oh, I could see that. I could see that. Definitely. Madonna. Oh, totally. <laughs> Barack Obama. Really? Um, um, that that one surprises me. A little a tricky. Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger. I can't believe that, but it's probably true. <laughs> Sandra Bullock. Okay. Whitney Houston. Oh, I definitely, definitely, yeah. And my Charlize Theron. I mean, look at these. Okay, my favorite, the Jagger, Mick. Jagger. Mick Jagger, yeah. Mick, Mick, dude. 1943 you go guys you keep going uh and you know it's fascinating because when you think and Meghan Markle right when you think about these people they have had to make decisions in their lives that pointed them in one direction or another and you see this thing that they're calling a weakness I'm not so sure it is and I'll tell you why I think it's different for for I think it's different for men and women but even Halle Berry Jason Momoa Ben Affleck these are people that have been in the spotlight that have made some decisions Meghan Markle made some decisions where people have looked at that in a negative way Jennifer Lawrence same thing it's well, fascinating Chris Hemsworth Mr. Thor right well, and the one that preceded all of them, who broke all the rules and all the <laughs> barriers, who was born on this very day in 1893, Mae West. <laughs> Mae West. I mean, if, if for those of you who, who haven't studied film, Mae West was sultry. She was sexy, outspoken, sarcastic. Her movies, she ad lived a lot and made, said these things which pushed the boundaries in the 30s, 40s, 50s. In fact, uh, she I think she didn't pass until like the 80s. She was quite elderly when she passed. 
And apparently she was living with a man like 50 years younger than her. She still had a big buff bow on her arm um, the whole time. And um, there was an interview that she did when she was in her 70s. And this is back when 70 was considered very old. You know, now 70s, yeah. I've like been 50. I mean, I, I, I know people in their 70s are out playing tennis and surfing and all this. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they went into her, her bedroom and the reporter said, there's a mirror above your bed. He goes, why? And she said, I still like to see how I'm doing. <laughs> but, you know, I love it. And, you know, a lot of the people I mentioned, I just want to say some of them would be considered on the cusp. For example, Sandra Bullock is July, is a July, but a yeah. later July. And some of these others, you know, Jennifer Lopez, July 23rd, 24th, these dates. So it changes a little bit. It's not that cut and dry. You happen to pick the day, August today, 17th. Yeah. It's very pivotal for a Leo, right? You know, yeah. we're coming into the Leo, but there's got to be some overflow. You know what I'm saying? There's a little bit of overflow. Now, in my case, being a Sagittarius on the 11th, I'm like smack dab in the middle, right, of certain things. But for a lot of people, when you think about their dates, like Jason Momoa is more in the Leo style, right? Martha yeah. Stewart, Tony, yeah. they're more in the Leo style. All of those other people in the in the Leo style. But it's not that cut and dry. So when we call today, call in, we're going to go to a short break. What we're talking about for all of you is the spirit of this. So you may hear Mark and I during these call-ins today, you may hear us kind of reference this a little bit. You know, you may hear us do that in, in a way where all of you should know that it's in the spirit of fun, but put your lioness on. 1-800-930-2819. Let's take a short break. When we come back, have any of those people influenced you ever in your life? Do you think? Talk to my friend Ronnie about Madonna. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Psychic in the Dark. Let's just take a moment because we rarely get time to do this. Mark, let's take a moment. If you could just fill us in, I know you got, can't tell us everything, but give everybody a bird's eye view of what you've been up to. Talk about some of the things you're now able to do that many people have not been able to do for a really long time, but you're out there, you're doing things. What? Give us a sense of what that's like now. Well, it's it's really wonderful being back on tour. And uh, two weeks ago, I wasn't able to be here on the show because I was in the Midwest filming um, an episode for a new show that will be airing on the Discovery Channel. And as much as I'd love to tell everyone about it, I'm not at liberty to, to say that. But um, keep tuned in to Discovery Channel because it's really going to be a fascinating episode. And now that we're in the post-pandemic era, it it is very interesting going back out there and dealing with people. And I've noticed there's more fist bumps than there's handshaking that used to be. Uh, people are a little less um, willing to, to, to hug each other. And, you know, as much as I like shaking hands and hugging people, I think that that's really good common sense. You know, we should maintain a, a fair amount of social distance because uh, COVID's not over. It's unfortunately, it's it's going to be here with us for a while, but so is the flu, uh, bronchitis, pneumonia, uh, RSV, all sorts of uh, other, other nasty uh, um, illnesses. And so I've noticed that when I have been out on the road, people appear to be more conscious of that. Yeah. But it's it's been really great. And Rocky has been uh, working with people nationwide Looks like 2024 is going to be pretty action packed. Looks like I'll be um, it, uh, in in California, in Arizona, in Texas, in North Carolina, in Virginia, just to name a few, uh, and Florida. Uh, so I mean, I'm definitely going to be out there um, beyond the lecture circuit, uh, be be talking, doing spirit communication events, and of course. Most importantly, I'll be here every Thursday or most every Thursday doing yeah. the psychic and the doc. And let me tell you something, Dr. Pat. Yeah. This show has has really touched a lot of people because when I am on tour, people come up to me. 
I'll be signing books. And they go, I love that show you do with Dr. Pat. And, and uh, people tell me that even though many of them haven't called in, they said yeah. what they get out of it um, is really, really helpful. So, um, so thank you everyone for yes, tuning thank in. You. Thank you. Thank you for listening. And in, and the call in number is 1-800-930-2819. And if you'd like to call in Dr. Pat and I, the psychic yeah. and the doc are on call. And right now. Yeah. I want to go back to Leo for a minute. Okay. I threw sure. out some celebrities and yeah, okay. Let's just throw out a few names, but let's talk about this energy because it is an energy that a lot of people don't know enough about, but it heralds in a season. See what I'm saying? It yeah. heralds in a season. Although Virgo would love to take responsibility for that given when Virgo starts in September. Now, Linda is the Virgo, triple Virgo, 20th of September. Okay. So Virgos want to really say we are the season of change, right? Okay. But Leo, Leo gets the mojo going. Think about Leo for a minute. It, it, it is that, that sign that's founded on you know, let's take mythology. It's mythology. I mean, it is, it's a, it's a lion. You see the lion in glyphs, right? This is right. what you see. So when you think about this energy, this is what I want to encourage people that are listening to the show. This is the time for you to roar. If you have not roared this year, like, roar, like that, or the way Katy Perry does it, I don't know. If you haven't done it, and it is the time, like my friend Ava Sikowski, Sikowski sings about in my one of my favorite songs, it is time to jump into the deep end of the pool. It is that time. Because by the time we get to Virgo, you're going to have Virgo think you, logically, critically help you now that you've jumped into the end of the pool. Do you know what I'm trying to say about this Greek oh, Leon, sure. Leon? Well, certainly. And... and all the Leos that you mentioned, you had Madonna, uh, Jennifer Lawrence, Jennifer Lopez, Mick Jagger, uh, Mae West, um, and all of these people are very edgy, very dynamic, and all of them push the envelope. And I love that. Yet yeah, Leos are not, um, I don't want to say they're not work and play well with other people. They're the ones that are more tending, <laughs> they tend more to be the leader of the pack. I, I think. Yeah. Uh, so the cosmic joke that my friends say to me, this is their little joke. They're like, you are supposed to be the favorite. You're supposed to be my bud, Patty. You're supposed to be the bud. I'm the Leo. You're the Sag. Like we're supposed to be like buddies, right? Uh, Aries, Sag, Leo, supposed to be like the buddies. And yet, that's not it. And for years, I thought long and hard about that. And you mentioned something I want to get back to. That's why we can't shove people in a box. I am a very unusual quadruple Sagittarius. I am much more like a Capricorn in person. I am, I have scored one of the highest scores on the Myers-Briggs test as an introvert. They had me take it four times. They said I scored in such the lowest, the mark on the normal curve, right? They said, you're in such an outlier category. You've either tricked the test. So they give you four versions where they change up the questions four times. They did this in my corporate career. Took it four times. My boss was insane. She's like, we're going to have to take you out of that job position. I'm like, what? She says, you can't do the job position you're in. You're in a job position where you're supposed to be in front of people and you're leading the charge. And, and the Myers-Briggs people came in and had to explain to the leadership team, that is not what it means to be an introvert. This is why I don't hit it off with Leos. You ready for the punchline? I'm ready. My Capricorn drives me to be working, successful. My Sagittarius wants me to do, do good things in the world. My Leo friends, they don't start getting charged up till eight o'clock at night. This introverted Sagittarius and Capricorn 
Don't even call me at eight, at eight, at eight o'clock at night. I'm binging on Netflix so that I can be and calm my inner self or I'm by myself. Linda, Linda's in here. Her sister will come home very late. Another Sagittarius, but a real one. She's like a real one, real mm -hmm. extrovert Sag comes in at nine o'clock at night. Where are you going? Why are you going to bed? I just got in here. Can't we talk for a little bit? I'm like, I talk all day. I talk all day. So it isn't a one size. Every reading you do, every time somebody calls in, it's unique. It's different. It's special. Everybody we bring on the show, and we, we, it doesn't matter how many times they call in. It's unique. And I love that we banter about astrology, but I want to be very mindful and careful that we don't categorize people because Leos really are those people. They just may not be those people to match your individual personality. Right. Just like your ex. Yeah, it's it's important to realize, wouldn't it be boring if everybody was the same? Ah. You know, and, and, and astrology is very complex. And what's fascinating when spirits communicate with me, and you've seen this uh, many times, I'll, many times they'll give me astrological time frames. I'll say they're showing me Leo, so I'm getting some significant event between July 22nd, August 22nd, uh, could be a birth, death, anniversary or event. And the funny thing is, while I, I have a basic understanding of astrology, I'm not really an astrologer, but spirits tend, when they talk about time frames, to give astrological time frames. That's right. And, you know, this is really the key for everybody, right? Because it's not, it's, it, I, gosh, I wish it was like, do you want a glass of water or not? <laughs> you want the water? You don't want the water. Yes or no? Right? It's not like, uh, could you maybe give me like partial water? It's so beautiful that we have taken the human dynamic and been able to place it in ways that people can pick and choose things in life that help them understand themselves better. Do you see what I mean? Oh, certainly. Certainly. Um I have found that in in when you said like everyone that calls in is different, and that's an important lesson everyone needs to understand is we're all individuals. And even people who think that their lives don't count, don't matter, that they're not making a difference, you are, and you are special. You don't have to be a Madonna or a Whitney Houston or a Mick Jagger or Barack Obama to make a difference. Just being you and interacting with people around you makes a difference. And, you know, and if we were all the same, we'd be like a school of fish. Same shape, same size, react to things the same way. How interesting would that be? <laughs> it is really fascinating. And we're going to take a short break, but I want to leave it at this. You know, Egypt, Egypt, you got to love Egypt, right? Gold, Egypt, so much history. It's all Mark, over Mark, back we here. Do, we do all, I was just going to say that. But, you know, the rule of one of the rulers of Egypt, you know, uh, Tutankhamun or Tutankhamun, however you say it, King Tut, uh, lions, gold lions, right? Gold yes. lions. Why were they so important? What did those mythical, beautiful, golden did anybody ever find those things? Just wondering. What? Oh my gosh. What were the signs? What did they mean? So why do we say spiritual in Leo? When we come back, we're going to dive into it, but we are taking your calls. 1-800-930-2819. Give us a shout. We'll be right back with the psychic and the doc. Welcome back to The Psychic and the Doc. I am Mark Anthony, The Psychic, and I'm here with the amazing Dr. Pat, a world-renowned behavioral psychologist who's been making a difference in people's lives for her entire life. But, you know, roughly two decades ago, Dr. Pat started The Dr. Pat Show. 
And that has now grown into the Transformation Network. And we at the Transformation Network are now global. And we're not just an internet streaming shows. We're also on, on terrestrial radio stations worldwide. And it's an honor to work with Dr. Pat because she's been changing, changing lives by listening and not telling people what to do, but guiding them to find their own answers. And if people would like to call in to talk to Dr. Pat and, or to me, please call 1-800-930-2819. Dr. Pat, before we went to the break, we were talking about Leo and the symbol of Leo is the lion. Now the lion has been depicted as a very powerful symbol and it makes sense i mean it's a big mean apex predator cat and egyptian art you're talking about egyptian art yeah and in king tutankhamun's tomb and for people who who may not be aware king tutankhamun he was not found in a pyramid okay the pyramids were already almost 1500 years old by the time King Tutankhamun was buried in an area called the Valley of the Kings. So he was buried in an underground chamber. And 100 years ago, uh, his tomb was discovered. And it was the only tomb in the Valley of the Kings that had not been plundered. And when archaeologist Howard Carter opened the tomb, he and the other British uh, archaeologists and the Egyptians that were there were dumbfounded by the vast amount of treasure and lions figured prominently. In fact, they found furniture. Uh, one bed, um, it's like the, the bedposts were cows. Another bedpost were lions. His throne, the, um, the you know, which was a, a very ornate chair, it had lion heads on, on the armrest. Now, let's go back even farther to the time of the pyramids, which would be 1,500 years before Tutankhamun. And maybe we can go even further back in time than that. Where the Great Pyramids are is known as the Giza Plateau. Mm -hmm. And it's an energy vortex. It's an area where there's like a whirlpool of electromagnetic energy. And there's a number of spots throughout the world like Sedona and Stonehenge, the Bermuda Triangle. There's a lot of places ah. that are vortexes. And we know the Great Sphinx because there it is. The body of the lion has got a pharaoh's head on it. But the head's the wrong size. When you look at the Sphinx, it's out of proportion. Now, I've been very fortunate because in my work as the psychic explorer, I've um, been able to lecture at ancient mysteries conferences, and I've met a couple of the scientists, uh, Dr. Robert Scotch and Manu Savezade, who have been working on the Giza Plateau studying the Great Sphinx. And uh, the uh, Greek historian Herodotus, who lived 300 years before Christ, said that the Egyptian priests at the time told him there was a chamber beneath the Sphinx. All right, Robert Scotch is a geologist, so he's been doing these sound tests all over um, the Giza Plateau, and it appears that there is a large hollow chamber beneath the front paws of the Sphinx. Wow. And now, and now here's where it gets even more interesting. As a geologist, he started studying the water erosion marks on the Sphinx. And the erosion marks are consistent with tropical rainfall. Well, the Giza Plateau is part of the Sahara Desert. But 10,000 years ago, Right after the last ice age, the Giza Plateau was a tropical rainforest. And then over time, over the thousands of years, the area climate change began to dry it out. Yeah. Here's what's fascinating. The pyramids and archaeologists believe that traditional archaeology believes that the Pure, um, pyramids were built 4,500 years ago, and the second largest pyramid was built by Pharaoh Khafre, and that the head of the Sphinx is that of Pharaoh Khafre. So it's always been assumed that Khafre had this built. But the head of the Sphinx is too small for the rest of its body, and 
the Egyptians certainly understood perspective. The water erosion marks indicating that the Sphinx may have uh, dated from when the area was a tropical rainforest put its age at between six and 8,000 years ago, whereas the, the Great Pyramids are 4,500 years ago, and there are no water erosion marks from tropical rainforests on the pyramids. Wow. What do you make of that, Mark? I mean, from where you sit. <clears throat> it Well, it, it opens the door that, and, and the reason the lion's so important, we know that the Sphinx is the body of a lion, and so Manu Sefezadeh, Dr. Robert Scotch, and other archaeologists who are taking another look at this, think that the Sphinx was initially a lion, and most likely a lioness, and she is looking to due east for the rising sun, and so thousands of years later, Caffre had the head whittled down to look like him. What does this mean? Well, I don't like jump to conclusions. I don't, I don't want to say aliens came down and did this. But the fact remains that these water erosion marks are there, and they don't correspond with any of the other monuments right near it. So... Was there a civilization that predated the Great Pyramids, the Egyptian civilization that we know? Was it Atlantis? Was it something else? Was it some other sophisticated Egyptian civilization? That's what I make of it. Yeah. And that's part of the fun of archaeology is there's all these cool mysteries. It's very things. cool. It's very cool. It's but very it's, cool. But it shows for thousands of years, lions have been given a tremendous mystical significance. I mean, building the Great Sphinx, it's an enormous statue. And whenever it was done 4,500 or 8,000 years ago, this was a massive undertaking that required hundreds, if not thousands of workers, organization, architectural and artistic skill that far exceeds anything from the prehistoric age now we're going to take a short break but when we come back get ready for this what should i call it what would be a creature that has transcended thousands thousands and thousands of years maybe in in thinking about it if ever existing that has become uber popular in 2023 and almost the entire decade before us what is that creature that's not an astrological sign that can even top top i tell you the lion let's take a short break mark and i will have a chat about that when we come back we'll be right back <laughs> Back to oh oh go oh, ahead forgot. Dr. Pat. No, you go ahead and do it. I forgot. I'm so oh, used to I'm so used no, to doing my show. You know what it is? Like, ah. We're so we were so excited talking about we this next excited. segment on yeah, the break. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back to the psychic and the doc. I'm Mark Anthony, the psychic. I'm here with Dr. Pat. And before we went to break, Dr. Pat, you left us with a cliffhanger. Like I what think Sierra should creatures... tell us because Sierra, this is Sierra's little a little Chinese sign. Sierra, right? The dragon. <laughs> <laughs> How can something be so mythical and so embodied? It, you know, when you ask people, do you think angels exist? They say yes. Ask them if you think dragons existed. It's equally the same. How does that happen, Mark? I've got a lot to say on 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 this. Um, <laughs> That's our new book, Angels and Dragons. Angels and Dragons. Well, you know, where I live in Florida, we have alligators, and the area I live in, they've now spotted the um, North American crocodile, which is making a comeback, which uh, the reason they know this is they found a couple of them recently grabbing people's dogs, so that's that's not a good thing. But, but at any rate, um, people, let's say a European, 
that had never seen an alligator or crocodile visits North Africa, goes to the Nile River and sees a, an alligator or a cro crocodile, rather, you could say that that's a dragon. But let's take another look at it. Dragons are all over the world. Um, European mythology uh, contains them, Middle Eastern mythology, African, Asian, certainly Chinese. Um, they're, they're some type of dragon-like creatures in a lot of the Native American. My thought has always been that dinosaur skeletons may have been uncovered, let's say 1,500, 2,000 years ago, maybe even longer. They wouldn't know what it was. Because now when paleontologists are seeking dinosaur skeletons, they have to go deeper into the ground. But some of the most famous finds were right near the surface. So let's say they're in China. The emperor is ordering the building of something, and all of a sudden they uncover this thing. And it's long, and it's got a spinal column, and the best they can tell, it's some type of immense creature. What if they unearthed a pterodactyl? What if they unearthed a T-Rex? Okay, so it doesn't take a genius to start saying that people would realize that these fossils were some type of skeletal remains of something. So the thing about when you study archaeology and when you study mythology, there tends to be a kernel of truth at the basis of all myths. And perhaps that kernel of truth could be that various cultures, civilizations around the world happened upon a dinosaur fossil and interpreted that as a dragon. Now, certainly when you see uh, dinosaur skeletons reconstructed, I, I can definitely understand why people think, well, that would be a dragon. I mean, if you saw the real thing. Right. Yeah. So, and, and you know, when people talk about sea monsters, I mean, you know, great white shark is as much as a sea monster as, as I want to deal with, um, or anybody for that matter. So there could be that, that, um, that to it. But with dragons, they're more than just fire-breathing monsters. They also have mythical and mystical and spiritual significance. Once again, the mystery of what this thing is could lead to that. That anyway is a hypothesis that I've been. I like it. On. I like it. You know, the thing, the reason I bring it up is, you, you know, here out of all of these non-astrological and, and I let me apologize uh, from an astrology perspective and Chinese astrology and other forms of astrology, the dragons are, are prevalent. But when you look for glyphs, there's only one glyph that I think that I, in Utah, uh, that looked at a Petrosaurus or something. And that was the image. But it's very hard to find, you know, glyphs, glyph sim symbols, dragon symbols, right? Right. And, I, 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 and yet every, almost every popular game, video game for the gamers gamers out there dragons um almost every show you see uh come up stock photos of dragons game of thrones the high point oh enter the dragon um, right which is so many things we relate to about dragons even cartoon cartoons where dragons are your friends what is the fascination from your perspective do you think we have with them you know a lot of us depict snakes as evil now, dragons are powerful, powerful, but we tend to befriend them. Yes, yes. And, and snakes, say I'm a fan of snakes because, let's face it, they are kind of creepy and slithery and all that. But like all creatures, they have their function and their place in nature. Nature nature's very well balanced until, of course, humans start getting involved and we start deciding what, what the balance is. <laughs> Um, you know, in certainly in the Judeo-Christian Islamic tradition, snakes and Eve in the Garden of Eden and all that, snakes are the universal symbol of evil. But the Egyptians looked at a cobra as a symbol oh. of the pharaoh. And yeah. on the pharaoh's uh, headdress, the nemes, there was the crown, there was the vulture, and there was the 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 cobra. And the cobra symbolized Pharaoh's power because it could spit poison at his enemies. And you think about it, when you would bring, 
when somebody, a visitor or a, an ambassador from a, a rival or a neighboring country came into Pharaoh's court, and there he was sitting on the throne, and I'm sure they had the lighting just right to get this very imposing thing, and he was supposedly a god on earth and all of that. Um, the Buddhists talk about um, how, um, actually, I think it's the Hindus, rather, the Hindus talk about how the cobra um, expanded its hood to shade the baby Krishna from the sun. So not all re uh, religions and belief systems always jump to the conclusion that snakes are evil. Even the Native Americans looked at them because they saw that they had their balance. Some of them look at it as fertility. The ancient Greek symbol of the medical symbol, Dr. Pat, of the two snakes known as the caduceus, the snakes in that context were looked at with healing properties. So, But what is the fascination with dragons? Well, the real dragons, the Komodo dragons, and I've seen them, um, and they're very alligator-like, and they're also, if they bite you, it's poisonous. Um, so so there are creatures that in, in Asia that have been identified as dragons. Now, they're not 100 feet long, but they're, they're big enough. I mean, they're a good 20 feet long, and, and you certainly don't want to get near them. Um, but the fascination, I think, is the power, the majesty, the mystery, uh, and that's why I keep thinking that the real dragons, I mean, uh, other than the Komodo dragons, very well may have been dinosaur skeletons yeah. and that yeah. got the imaginations of people going and they yeah. started attributing all these spiritual powers to them. Yeah, uh, we almost live in a world right now where if you're going to, if you're going to create a mythical movie or show or something that we watch right it's just not going to make it without a dragon that's how attached we are to them at such an interesting fascinating level it really is amazing when we look at humanity and we look at ourselves you know to see now wait a minute are we just victims of pop culture or is there something in our dna is there something inside of us that's reminding us of another place, maybe another world, maybe like people like to talk about dragons in the new, in the forgotten realm. That's the thing. Why is it the forgotten realm? Are we bringing some maybe psychic memories from some other place, some other time, some other world? You see, these are the things that a lot of the the great new television shows, you know, on Discover Channel and History Channel and some of those channels, they are bringing forth things that make us think. What do you What do you think, Mark? Really gets oh. you going. Oh, it, it it does. It does. You know. And then there's another theory, and this is one that was circulating with the Loch Ness monster, <laughs> which well, the thought was it could have been a plesiosaur. Um, and then there, there are people who've hypothesized that maybe there were pockets throughout the world where possibly some dinosaurs did manage to survive. Yeah. Um, I, I did extensive research on Loch Ness and we think we have solved the mystery. A, um, a New Zealand research team said, well, the Loch Ness Monster is in the water, so let's examine the water. And they started testing the DNA in the water, and they found something they didn't expect, an enormous amount of eel DNA. And then it was like, well, yeah, there are giant eels. And think about the, the slithery things you see along yeah. the surface, an eel sticking its head up. Yeah. Voila. Now we're having a much more plausible theory. In fact, there was one king of England back in the medieval era. He was an absolute SOB, and he was in some battle, and he fell into a stream and was eaten by eels, okay? Now, that was documented, and I'm sure his enemies were watching going, oh, well, you know, but but uh, you look at Loch Ness, seven miles long, 800 miles deep, and I've been there. And it's mystery and monstery. And I remember talking to a couple of the locals and I said, well, don't you hope they find the monster? And they go, not at all. They go, the mystery, the monster, it's good for business. You know, so, so I think, Dr. Pat, to answer your question, people have a, a, an innate need for mystery. 
and and dragons are at the center of the mystery we are amazing creatures now people still go to forts washington to see if they could cite the cullen family the whole twilight vampire gang only to find disappointedly the show wasn't even filmed in forts so let's give five cheers for imagination because it keeps us smiling don't ever give up the fantasy of your life you know hang on to those things that make you imagine that make you think that make you wonder you know is this really true should i maybe look in a different perspective because just like the lion it may not be a lion it may be a sphinx personal message what do you want to leave us with mark I think that a life without mystery isn't much of a life without all uh, at all, because we we need this uh, in our lives. And if people want to find out um, more about upcoming episodes and about the work I'm doing, please visit my website, afterlifefrequency.com, um, or visit transformationtalkradio.com. And everybody, yes. we're going to be back next week, and we will also have a call-in show then, so we look forward to your calls. Dr. Pat, as always, it's been an honor. Um, Sierra, Rocky, thank you for, for uh, handling the technical end. And everybody, totally. we, we'll see you next week. And roar, roar, roar. We'll see you next time. Hey, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to The Psychic in the Dark with Mark Anthony and me, Dr. Pat but silly right here on transformationtalkradio.com. Hey, look, come back next week so we can explore with you more of life's many challenges and learn from fascinating guests. And you know what? Even Mark and me. We'll connect you and discover insights from people in this life and from the afterlife. Extraordinary problems? Yeah, they do. They require extraordinary solutions. But step into the world of possibilities with us on the psychic and the dot. That's every Thursday. 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. That's TransformationTalkRadio.com. And don't forget, we're also live face-to-face -face on Facebook.com, Transformation Talk Radio. <laughs>